Well, Bennett Kessler filed this report. Officials described their support of the nonprofit organization called Mammoth Lakes Recreation as part of a continuation of long discussed recreation issues in Mammoth. This time, many said they think Mammoth Lakes Recreation will actually make better recreation facilities and projects happen. The Mammoth Town Council voted unanimously to approve a funding scenario for MLR and continue with the transition of current functions into Mammoth Lakes Recreation. Now, Dana Proud, chair of the MLR Formation Committee, walked the Mammoth Town Council through past steps that led up to Mammoth Lakes Recreation and plans to grow outside money sources and leadership for new recreation. Stroud said past meetings concluded that Mammoth could gain more out of dollars, find new dollars, and economic development through MLR. Mammoth Councilwoman Joe Bacon, who sits on the MLR committee, said the town attorney helped them determine how funds in tax measures R and U, which is about $1.8 million per year, could be used. She said part of Measure R can be used for the town to contract with MLR. MLR can recommend, recommend uses for funds in measures R and U. Their priorities would go to the town council for final decisions. Stroud said many more details can be worked out in a contract between the town and MLR. She said Mammoth Lakes Recreation would serve as the, quote, lead on many things and through partnerships with the town, forest service, and non-governmental organizations. Now, council candidate Karen Seibert had raised concerns about the MLR bylaws and the possibility of board members to profit. Town attorney Andy Morris said the bylaws are typical. He did say that he could check with the Fair Political Practices Commission on further conflict rules. The town council agreed with that and said his answers could also apply to Mammoth Lakes Tourism and Mammoth Lakes Housing. Now, the idea is to create a permanent board of directors in the fall. Meanwhile, the current formation committee will act as a transition board. MLR will hire an executive director and pay between $90,000 and $110,000 plus benefits. Councilman Matthew Lehman recommended the low end. Now, six people commented on moving ahead with MLR. Sandy Hogan suggested transitioning once a contract exists between the town and Mammoth Lakes Recreation. Terry Stelick of the Recreation Commission favored moving forward, and so did John Wentworth, citizen, candidate, and CEO of Mammoth Lakes Trails. He said of Mammoth Lakes Recreation, quote, this is innovation writ large in flesh and blood, end quote. Others asked why the town could not do the work instead of MLR. Pat Agnich questioned if voters wanted Measure R to pay for administrative costs. Now, Mammoth Mayor Rick Wood, who sits on the MLR committee, said it takes time to work through a transition process. He said it took Mammoth Lakes Tourism a year. Wood said the committee is just asking in the town council to give another push forward. And the town council did just that with a unanimous vote to begin the transition of Measure U and R processes to Mammoth Lakes Recreation and to begin negotiations on a contract with the town. Well, after some spring storms, a nice warming period made for some nice days to get out to Whitmore Pool. Rob Gill filed this story. My name is Brittany Miller. I'm the aquatic director down here at Whitmore Pool. So this summer, what we offer down here at Whitmore Pool is um, right now we're open for AM lap swim. That's 630 to 9. And then on Tuesdays and Thursday evenings, we have PM lap swim from 530 to 7 o'clock. And then starting on June 21st, which is our official opening day, we'll have free admission for our rec swim that starts that day. And then throughout the summer, we'll have rec swim, AM and PM lap swim, and swim lessons. Uh, we open up at 6 a.m., just like in preseason, 6.30 to 9 for our AM lap swim. Then we'll have 12.30 to 4 o'clock is our rec swim. And then we'll have, again, Tuesdays and Thursday evenings, our PM lap swim, 5 to 7, 5.30 to 7 o'clock. So if you're um, a family, I totally recommend getting the family pass. It's $180. It's unlimited use for the entire summer. Um, if you're an individual who comes to a lot of lap swim, I would recommend the individual swim pass. It's $130. Otherwise, if you're only going to come a few times, we have a five punch pass. That's $22. And the sixth, the sixth pass is free. 
Um, and then individual, it's four seventy-five for an adult. Whitmore Pool is off Benton Crossing Road. It's um, if you take a left after the airport coming out of Mammoth by the Green Church, we're maybe half a mile down the road on the right hand side. So come join us at the Whitmore Pool. You can't beat this scenery and it's always a good time. Well, thank you for that, Rob. Looks like a nice cool way to spend a day. Well, late Saturday afternoon, a couple and their dog flying over the Mammoth Lakes area apparently lost power in their plane, but managed to maneuver what authorities called a controlled crash landing on Sherwin Creek Road. Reports said the aircraft, which was a Cessna, was unable to maintain power. The pilot put down the plane just past the big propane tanks on the way to the campgrounds. The pilot, his wife, and their dog all walked away uninjured, according to reports. A tow truck moved the plane a short distance from where it crash landed to an area which did not block the road. And when 911 calls started to pour in, multiple agencies responded to that crash site. Also on Monday afternoon, the Inyo Sheriff's Department responded to a report of a paraglider crash with major injuries between the Black Rock Hatchery area and Division Creek Rest area north of Independence and to the east of that area. Someone saw the red and white paraglider go down and reported that the person aboard suffered major injuries. The Independence Volunteer Ambulance Service retrieved the injured paraglider, met Simons Ambulance at Hatchery Road and the highway, and Simons rushed the injured man to Northern Inyo Hospital in Bishop. And also on Saturday, Rihanna Giselle Murphy of Bishop rolled her truck southbound on Sherwin Grade. The California Highway Patrol said for an unknown reason, her truck veered into the center divider and rolled several times. She died from traumatic injuries. She was 20. Her family and friends will remember the young woman in a memorial service on Saturday. An obituary notes Rhiannon touched everyone she knew with her amazing spirit. Whether she shot you a whimsical smile, made your belly hurt from laughter, or soothed your soul with her angelic voice, she was pure light, love, and joy. A memorial service for Rhiannon will be held at Calvary Baptist Church, West Line Street in Bishop, Saturday at 2 p.m. And in lieu of flowers, a donation in memory of Rhiannon Murphy to Eye Care would be greatly appreciated. And Lifetime Big Pine resident Argus Gerald Jerry Horton, also known as Moon, to good friends and family, passed away peacefully surrounded by family last Thursday. Jerry was 71. Jerry Horton owned and operated Horton Brothers Painting for 44 years, loved fly fishing Big Pine Creek, backpacking the back country to fish for golden trout, riding Harley Davidson motorcycles and restoring classic cars, hot rods, as well as playing guitar. Services are Saturday, 2 p.m. at Mendenhall Park in Big Pine. Now, should friends desire, in lieu of flowers, memorial contributions to the Big Pine Fire Department can be made in memory of Jerry Horton. And we ask that you please see the full obituaries on Rhiannon Murphy and Jerry Horton on our website, sierrawave.net.